Hello, I'm Oliver Piccolard and welcome to my workshop in beautiful Limousin, France. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Pandora, my lovely little Cox GTM, and why I chose this Honda K20A2 engine to put inside it from a uh, Honda Civic EP3 or a Honda Integra DC5 or a Acura RSX Type S. Um, why I chose this engine to put in this car and not one of the other engines that uh, you lovely people in the comments suggested that I buy. So I'm going to go over this engine and tell you why I bought this engine in particular. But first, I want to answer some of the questions as to why I didn't buy other engines like a motorbike engine or just keep with the original mini engine. Well, Pandora, let's start with the mini engine, shall we? Pandora didn't come to me with an engine in her. If the car would have come with an engine, I would have kept that engine, I would have kept an A-series and I would have made a 1290 with an 8-port head and a scatter pattern David Visard cam, but that engine would have been really, really expensive to make and I would have wanted a Swift Tune 5-speed gearbox, which is like a 10 grand engine. And that's 10 grand to maybe get, you know, 140 to 150 horsepower. So that's, that's a lot of work and a lot of money for not a lot of power. But like I say, if this engine, if this car came with an engine, I, that's what I would have done. Pandora originally, as far as I know, in, of the history of the car that I know, had a MG Metro Turbo Mini A-Series engine which I don't like mini turbo engines, they get very hot, which is why she caught on fire. And um, and I wouldn't have had a, a Metro turbo engine in her anyway. So that's why not a mini engine. I'm in France, they're hard to get hold of and I would have had to build an engine or pay someone to build an engine for me. It would have been a lot of money and at the end of it, I wouldn't have had a lot of power. And I would have had to use it in order to have a limited slip diff I would have had to use a straight cut gearbox. So that's that's why I didn't want that. I don't like straight cut gearboxes in road cars. So that's why not an, a mini engine. Uh, why not a motorbike engine? Because that oh, that seems you know like a common thing, doesn't it? A lot of people will very like cars. You know, Jolie, uh, Pandora, sorry, is only 600 kilos, or she should be when she's finished, 620 in that region. Why not put a motorbike engine in her? Well. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is noise, and it's not something that people really think about, but motorbike engines produce a heck of a lot of noise, especially when you ring them out. And so, in fact, the, occasionally there are super there are super bikes that use a road near here, and I can hear them. It's not super loud, but I can hear them from my garden uh, when they go past every now and then. And I can, and if I can hear it, then, um, then you know, the policeman sat on the corner with his speed gun is certainly going to have plenty of time to get his speed gun out and say, well, oh, there's a car coming. I wonder what speed it's doing. You're going to attract the wrong sort of attention with a very loud engine. And now there are a lot of noise restrictions on racing tracks. So I wanted something that would comply with noise regulations, even though she's not going to be a track car. It, it, it attracts the wrong sort of attention on the road and it attracts kind of negativity on a track because even if you are right up against that sound regulation, if they move the sound regulations again, then I wouldn't be able to use my car on a track. On top of that, Motorbike engines have really long rev ranges and say a Suzuki Hayabusa, for example, which makes around 160 horsepower. That 160 horsepower is right at the top of that power curve. But that's not where you drive, you know, whatever it is, 10,000 RPM, 9,500 RPM or more. But that's not really where you drive when you're on the road. When you're on a road, you drive at between like three and 7,000 RPM, say. And in that speed, you have maybe, I don't know, 50 to 75 to maybe 100 and, I don't know, 130, 140 horsepower at the top. So you're only just faster than a mini engine. And yes, they are very lightweight, but they aren't cheap because Formula France cars also use higher booster engines. So in France, those engines are highly sought after. And I would have had to buy a transfer box to mate the engine to my car without using a chain. So those are expensive. So they're very sought after in France and they're very expensive. 
and they've got a, a, a very long rev range which doesn't suit kind of tight twisty b-road driving and on top of that as light as pandora is she's not as light as a suzuki hayabusa which means the clutch is under stress um, and you, you do end up replacing or going for a very serious clutch when you put a motorbike engine in a, uh, in a road car. And you have to kind of slip the clutch when you set off. And uh, in first and second, you have, to, you have to really be careful because the contact patch, even on a MotoGP bike, is just a little bit bigger than a Swan Vesta matchbox. Whereas the contact patch on, say, Pandora will be considerably bigger than that even you know four times the size and so you're putting that drive line under a lot of stress that it was never designed to be under and you are you're putting a, a tiny engine in what is for it a very heavy vehicle and i didn't want a, a drivetrain or an engine that was under stress so that's why i didn't go for a motorbike engine why didn't i go for a three-cylinder turbo because they're all the rage nowadays you know, your, uh, your Suzuki three-cylinder turbos from the Ignis and from uh, all that kind of thing. The Fiesta one-litre turbo that's the, the size of, you know, your engine block's the size of a loaf of bread. It's brilliant. And uh, there's also the Fiat Twin Air, which is a two-cylinder turbo. Well, they're great and all that, but they are very complicated. And also... There's a lot of electronics going on and a lot of fly-by wire throttle pedals and stuff like that that I didn't really want to deal with. And I've we're currently at a turning point in, in the automotive world where kind of normally aspirated engines are on their way out. Even Honda is now turbo with the new Civic Type R. And I thought it would be really nice to use a thoroughbred normally aspirated engine in such a tiny lightweight mid-engine thoroughbred itself you know put put a put a really nice zingy four-cylinder normally aspirated car with a beautifully smooth power band in what is what is a teeny tiny rally car you know and th there is a place for those three-cylinder cars but the another thing that i don't like about them is that the fuel economy figures given for those cars are for when you're driving them like Miss Daisy and you are kind of shifting at 2000 RPM and that kind of thing, which nobody really does. And as soon as you get into the power, as soon as you start using that turbo, you get the same fuel economy as this little fella. So that's why I didn't go with that. Um, that's, why I, that's why I didn't go with three cylinder turbo. The, it, a lot of the electronics to deal with and a lot of people who have the Fiesta 1 litre engines have had problems and had to rebuild those engines and modified the make around, you know, 165, 175 horsepower and they cost the same as a Honda K20A2. So, <laughs> you know, horsepower per euro or horsepower per dollar or whatever you want to use this is a lot more a lot more bang for the book quite literally with a lot less complication and i'm not having to mess around with turbos or with kind of funny shaped exhausts or with charge coolers and all that because it is a mid-engine car and so you've got a turbo and an intercooler in the rear of a car and uh, that engine base teeny 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 tiny and i know that the three cylinder engines and the two cylinder engines are very small but like i say for the amount of faffing I would have had to do to fit that engine in the car, I decided a normally aspirated engine would have been better. Although they are good and they do come with a six-speed gearbox, which I like. So that's why I didn't go with those engines. I didn't go with things like a Fiat Twin Cam because it's already an old engine and they are very expensive to build a Fiat Twin Cams. I have... There's a lot of Italian uh, ancestry around where I live in France, bizarrely. So actually Fiat engines and Alfa Romeo engines are everywhere. And I could have got one of those. But like I said, they're already an old engine. And part supply and stuff is okay. But if you want to start getting power out of them, then, uh, then you're going to have to spend some real money. And I didn't want to have to get a junkyard engine and completely rebuild it. I didn't want to be building engines. I wanted to get something out of a running driving vehicle. So that's why I didn't go for a Fiat Twin Cam. 
that they're actually really quite heavy and I wanted the lightest possible engine that I could. So, Honda engines. Now then, <laughs> why a K20A and not a D-series, which is a single cam or a, a tiny twin overhead cam, um, 16 valve, why a K-series and not a B-series, and why a K K20 and not a K24? Well, D-series, I absolutely adore the D-series engine. The D-series is looked down on in Honda circles because it makes 120 or 130 brake horsepower from the factory, but, and they, they don't see that as a big deal. Like, they don't see that as like, high performance, so they all suggest, well, turbo it or uh, engine swap it. So D-series engines are really cheap and parts for them are numerous and, and easily available. I really love the D-series engine because it weighs nothing. The, the D-series engine is like 130 kilos for everything, gearbox, manifolds, shafts, alternator, everything. So you're saving, you know, a, a mini engine, a, a mini A-series engine weighs 150 kilos without ancillaries and manifolds. So you're saving, you know, 30 kilos without, before you even get into manifolds and stuff, you're saving a minimum of 30 kilos on your drivetrain weight by going for a D-series engine, which is amazing. And if, honestly, if I could have found a really nice D-series engine, then there would be a D-series sat here. Uh, you get a five-speed gearbox, they're very simple. They're, like I said, you can get a set of throttle bodies for a D-series engine for like 125 quid. The, it's a beautiful engine and it's beautifully light and for this kind of car it's perfect unfortunately here in france um the there people are very you know peugeot renault citroen and because of that there is a honda community and people who have their hondas love their hondas and drive their hondas and because of that every single honda in france seems to have you know, 250, 300,000 miles on it, you know, 450,000 kilometers, and uh, they've all been to the moon and back. And like I said, I didn't want to build an engine. So <laughs> it would have been really tempting to go for that, but either, even with an engine rebuild, if I could have got a drivetrain or even a full car cheap enough, that would have been amazing. But the Honda community in France, like I say, is really strong and they love their cars. So Hondas in France are actually worth a lot of money. So are you talking about, I don't know, 3,000 euros for a, an old CRX in rough condition? You're talking, you know, even like a Honda Concerto or something like that. Uh, Concerto, Concerto. You're talking, you know, a lot of money. And so that's, that's K20 money. Um... So yeah, that's why I didn't go for a, for a D series. Why didn't I go for a B series? Well, simply put, a B series and a D series, uh, sorry, a B series and a K series weigh exactly the same. A K20 and a B18 or a B16 weigh exactly the same, near as damn it. And so you might as well have the more modern engine that's done less miles. That's that's simply that. Um, there's nothing wrong with the uh, the. B16 or the uh, B18. In fact, if I could have found a B18C, even though it only comes with a five-speed gearbox and not a six-speed gearbox, like I say, I would have been very, very tempted, but it would have had to be an Integra Type R B18C and not the one fitted to European Civics. And so, like I say, this bang for the buck gave me the best performance. And that's why I went for it. Now, why did I go for the K series? Why this and not a K24, for example? I looked at K24s, but um, very difficult to find in France. Very expensive in France. I would have had to buy an entire Honda Accord to get one. And I, I, I almost did that, actually. I emailed a guy to buy a Honda Accord and uh, it just didn't happen. So that's, <laughs> that, that I actually, I did almost buy an entire Honda Accord to get a K24 engine. But looking at it, I'm actually glad that I went for this K20 instead. The K24, it's a little bit taller, which of course 
in such a lightweight car is going to affect my center of weight and my suspension geometry and all of that sort of thing. And they produce a lot of torque. And I'm not using big 17 inch wheels on Pandora. There just isn't space. And also she's a classic looking girl and I'd like to keep her with classic looking wheels. So I can't shove, you know, a lot of guys who put K24 engines in Civics in order to get track performance with them they go from a 15 inch wheel to a 16 inch uh, sorry to a 17 inch wheel with a 225 front tyre there's no way in heck I can fit a, uh, a 17 inch wheel with a 225 tyre anywhere but in the cabin next to me <laughs> on Pandora so that wasn't happening and I don't want to be spinning my back tyres up through third gear because this is a mid-engine car with a very short wheelbase and it's going to be twitchy enough anyway. So I did look into buying a K24, I did think about it. But in the end, I'm glad that I didn't. Um, this is more than enough mid-range punch. This engine was 200 horsepower from the factory and uh, that's that's more than enough punch and i know that it is a very long it is a very long rev range and it does end at i think 8400 rpm from the factory and so driving between you know three and seven thousand rpm on the road i'm going to have more than enough punch to overtake any tractor or any long lorry or anything on a long uh, on a long stretch of b road there's going to be more than enough power there if not too much because this this particular engine has been gone over and uh, is making considerably more power than the 200 horse it left factory with and judging by other people and what uh, what other people have done depending on what exhaust manifold and stuff i run i could be turning out around you know 250 265 brake horsepower if not a little bit more because this has skunk two cams in it so i'm not quite sure Weight wise, uh, this engine weighs 405 pounds, which is 183.7 kilos. Just let me look that up. Yep, yeah, I'm right. Weight wise, this engine is 405 pounds, which is 183.7 kilos, which seems like a lot more than the 150 kilo mini engine that originally sat where this engine will sit. But that's with the manifolds, the alternator, the power steering pump, you know, all the ancillaries, including the shafts and the gearbox and all of that. So actually, by the time you've built a mini engine up with uh, with carburetors and manifolds, exhaust manifold and a water and um, an alternator and a starter motor and all that jazz, you're going to be getting quite close to that 183 kilos. On top of which, I'm going to be taking the power steering pump off this car. It won't have a cast exhaust manifold, of course, and um, the shafts are in included in that 183 kilo weight. So that's very very good. And um, it will, of course, be lighter than the Metro turbo engine, which was in this because everything on a Metro turbo engine is cast iron. You know, manifolds are scary, cast iron, you know, things and uh, and turbos are heavy and intercoolers are heavy and all of that. Having to run a bigger radiator and stuff because you're making more heat. All of those things I don't have to worry about with this. It's all been figured out. Honda, the Honda K series has a huge community behind it. Uh, a community that's been absolutely lovely and, and full of information and stuff and uh, ma massively helpful to, helpful to me in uh, in choosing this engine so that's why i've gone for this honda k-series engine the other really good bonus of the k-series engine is if i move the camera around on its oop, on its tripod This, this is the lay shaft that fits in the back of the gearbox. It fits on here. Now, in a Honda K-Series, the engine doesn't sit on top of the gearbox. It sits like it is now. It sits next to the gearbox. And that means that because 
the, one of the big problems with transverse engines, engines that sit sideways in the car, is that the engine tends to sit on top of the gearbox that makes for a very tall engine and drivetrain, which I didn't want. The other problem with that is that the shafts usually come out of the side of the engine. The crank is in line with the, uh, with the shafts, and that means that basically you end up with, in a mid-engine car, you end up with a mid-rear engine car. And that's not ideal. Your, your weight balance is all off and you have to balance that up by adding weight to the front or like using a bigger fuel tank or something like that. And I didn't really want to do that. I wanted a properly mid-engine car. A car that was, you know, centrally weighted, that didn't have a lot of weight in the back, that wouldn't be tricky on a wet road. I wanted a truly mid-engine car. I wanted a, a car that was truly at home on a track or on a twisty B road that didn't have any kind of scary characteristics in the wet and this really helps with that because it moves the weight forward in the car, it moves the weight centrally in the car and even though it's a lot of power you can just you know drive slower you don't have to you don't have to hammer it everywhere and this this is the other great thing about this engine because it's a six-speed gearbox, and because it's from a car that weighs 1,200 kilos, it it's not even going to know that the, the it's not even going to know that Pandora's there because Pandora weighs half of that. Pandora weighs half as much as a, a Honda Civic EP3 <laughs> Type R. So this engine is under no stress. It's under no strain. I don't have to use some scary competition clutch. Um, that's going to be horrible to use when I park the car or anything like that because there's there's no abuse in in the car. It's not having to push more than it was designed. It's less than it was designed. So actually, a standard Honda road clutch will be as good as a competition clutch would be. You know, all the bearings and and everything, all the tolerances in the gearbox are all designed to push a car that weighed one thousand two hundred kilos, and Pandora simply isn't that. So my gearbox should last ages and uh, without any problems my engine is completely under stressed so it will last ages before I have to rebuild it again and this is all good stuff on the motorway I can stick it in sixth gear I can turn 2000 rpm and I should be able to cruise along nicely and uh, you know that just under the speed limit and that's the wonderful thing I'll get really good fuel economy when I'm driving sensibly because it is VTEC so it's not some crazy cam all the time, although this does have Skunk 2 cams in it. So I am curious to see how that's going to work out because it is it is a slightly more peppy cam than, uh, than it actually came with from the factory. So I'm not quite sure what the characteristic of those Skunk 2 cams will be out of VTEC. I don't know. Um, but I should be able to use a, a standard road clutch without without it, you know, because it's so under stressed. I, I shouldn't have to actually push the engine ever, which is really good news. You know, having that big power reserve there to, to you know, you've got plenty of overtaking power. She'll keep up with modern traffic. Um, and I, I don't have to use, you know, crazy, crazy drive shafts or anything like that because I'm not using massive wheels and tires and I'm not pushing a load of weight. Even with the roll cage in it, the roll cage actually shouldn't add any weight because of the way that I'm doing it. And um, and so she should be really well paired to the car, and I'm I'm really happy about that. I'm really, like I'm I'm in love with this engine because it should be the perfect drivetrain for Pandora. Yes, the D series would have been really good, but it wouldn't have been quite as good on the motorway on long distance trips. You know, it just wouldn't have had that torque, and uh, and this will have that cruising torque. So. I did think about the K24, but the K24 is, <laughs> this is overkill. I mean, this is this is massively overkill. Whereas the K24 would have just been bananas. And actually, I could have given it way too much power and completely ruined it. Because it, it is a mid-engine car, and it is a very short wheelbase. I mean, it's just slightly longer than the original classic Mini is. And, uh, and being mid-engine, and eventually I will put a limited slip diff in it, but... Uh, for the moment, 
I think I'm just going to put everything in and just see how it handles and, and set it up and get it all working first because like I said I'm going to do completely custom suspension and uh, and stuff it needs it it needs completely custom suspension there's no way that the standard mini suspension even with coilovers will be happy taking this much power um, in, in such a tiny car I really want to make some uh, some nice long travel suspension that will be nice and soft and basically tarmac rally spec suspension because I really want that mechanical grip. I don't want to put a big wing on it or anything like that. She's she's a classic car and she needs to stay looking like a classic car. So she needs to have, you know, classic sized wheels and tires. And um, in order to have those classic sized wheels and tires and have this much power, and not have her as an undrivable mess every time it, it starts raining, then uh, I'm really gonna have to have some mechanical grip. So that's why I've gone for the K series engine, and uh, and that's why that's why no turbo. Although this is this is the other thing because this engine is so under stressed. If I if I do really lose my mind and I do decide that I want more power and I do decide that I want more, this engine would actually happily turbo. <laughs> I could supercharge it. I could turbocharge it. Um, uh, I could do many crazy things with it. it there is more to. It has more to give, but um, for the moment, I'm going to build this engine up to suit Pandora a little more than uh, because obviously it, it was designed to fit uh, fit in a Honda Civic or an Integra so. There are a couple of things that I want to tidy up. I don't need the power steering. I don't need the heater and, uh, and all that. So I'm going to get rid of all that and save all that weight and pop it in and see what she does first before I think about adding any more power because I, I honestly believe like it. Pandora will have the same power to weight ratio as a Corvette Z06 or well, actually a, a much higher power to weight ratio than a Corvette Z06 or a... Um, or a Lamborghini Murcia Lago or anything like that. So she, she, she'll more than keep up with modern traffic. And um, and yeah, I'll be happy with 200 brake horsepower at the rear wheels, to be honest. That's that's as much as I'm ever going to need, although I have a sneaking suspicion that this engine is going to make considerably more than that. I will only ever think, well, what will it do on a really hot day kind of thing. You know what will it do on a hot day when it's heat soaked and all that that's the power figure that i'm really interested in because the reliable nice power uh, that this engine will produce is is definitely what i want you know i want to take this car to the alps i want to take this car to the uk and i plan on doing a lot of miles in this car so i'm gonna need a bigger boot because <laughs> because currently I've, i'm gonna i'm about to fill my engine my boot full of engine but um, I think it's going to be worth it, even if I end up with soft bags stuffed in the passenger side footwell. But uh, yeah, oh, I'm really happy. This is this engine in this chassis that I'm about to make is a dream come true. So thank you all for watching. Tell me all down in the comment section what do you think? What do you think of uh, of what I've said? Do you have a a track car with a, a a Honda engine in it? What do you think? You know. Do you have a Civic with a K-Series engine in? What do you think of what I've uh, what I've had to say today? And do you think I've chosen the right engine for my chassis? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you are interested in any of my social media, um, that we have a, a Facebook group and all of that, that's all down in the description below. If you wanna help this channel out, if you wanna support me, the best way to do that is just share these videos with your friends. Thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.